All right. This is after Toast to the People, which is the first song that Brian Jackson and Gil Scott Heron made together. And it is just that. The songs of Toast to the People, to mothers, to fathers that struggle. So on the outside, we have our known heroes, some known, some unknown, some images of Gil. But on the inside, we have our past heroes. And we have our present dilemmas that I want people to consider, you know, how far have we come from here and to here? And what questions do you have? Where do you, where do you stand in this picture? What do you think about Black Lives Matter? What do you think about uh, taking a knee? Is there any correlation to the past for you? There are some quotes here by Gil says when it comes to people's safety, money wins out every time. Wow. This one says wow. man is a complex being. He makes deserts bloom and lakes die. And it's right over the Dakota Pipeline protest. Mm -hmm. So these are things to think about. And I also include a profound quote by Russell Means in which he said, Americans are the new Indians. Now, that's a bit scary, but it's, it's out there and it's something to consider. Uh, this first work is called the Bluesologist Liberation Song. I wanted to include the word bluesologist because often people try to put Gil, Scott Heron, and Brian Jackson's music in a category and it just won't fit. It's a unique sound. It's a unique uh, genre that they created and they c combined Brian having classical background, Gil having a blues background and they came up with something unique so that's why I named the painting the bluesologist. I want to emphasize blue. There's a lot of blue in the painting. Toast to the People is one of the first, if not the first, collaboration between Gil Scott Heron and Brian Jackson. Brian had the music and didn't have lyrics, and he was introduced to Gil at Lincoln University as a prolific lyric writer. And boom, there you have it, the beginning of a huge collaboration. So my collage Toast to the People is not only a tribute to their song, but to what the song is about. It's about all the people who have contributed to our freedom, who have contributed to the struggle of people of color all over the world. Now, this piece is an installation piece, and the door to it opens. I want to make sure that people have a concept of what we give credit to in terms of people now, accomplished people, first black president of the United States, our musicians, our actors. But when you open that door, I don't want you to forget about the people of the past or what's happening now, how people have to take a stand against racism against injustice and there's a quote by Gill inside of the door over the American flag so that you can really perceive the depth of his thinking but what's more important is the depth of your thinking and as you view it I hope that you toast the people past and present and that you get that Every person that's contributed to our liberation, our freedom, even now today, deserves to be toasted. Once Gil Scott Heron said, when you stand up for the rights of black people, you risk your life. Now that situation has spread to not just African Americans, but to other people. We need to all come together, learn from those people, who stood up against injustice and take a stand. So I want people to look at these two images side by side, look at the past, 
look at now and decide what are you going to do. And while you're at it, make a toast to the people who have stood for you. Gil Scott Heron was not thrilled about being called the grandfather of rap. His model and his mission was to be like the African Griot, to pass down history, thoughts, concepts, ideas through the spoken word, but he had a great knowledge of the blues being raised early in the South and then coming to New York City. He had a great respect for blues musicians and where that blues came from. It came from the souls of black folks. And that combined with his mission created his unique style. Message to the Messengers is one of the songs where he's speaking to our young people about what not to do and what things come off in music as a different, uh, a different perception than they wish it to be. Um, his thoughts are very, very, very deep. And he worked with a number of young musicians and I think that he had a great respect for them, but as an elder, as a teacher, he was trying to pass on something that was very, very important to their way of communication. Would have never seen Gil with a video of Hoochie Mamas or women in, you know, uh, skimpy clothing. You would have never seen him do that because his perception of what he was doing was beyond the glitz. In fact, he did not like um, being, I, I've met him and my perception at first was, oh my goodness, he's famous. He didn't like that distance between him and his people. He's very down to earth and uh, very kind, would communicate and talk to anyone that had a worthwhile conversation. And I'm very grateful that he took time for me. He had a very uh, sharp wit, very quick mind. And I will give you an example. I had told him that, I would asked him if he knew that one of the hospitals in New York was founded for emancipated elderly slaves and without missing a beat I had barely finished the sentence and Gil said is it still <laughs> but that was him very quick-witted uh, he sometimes would joke about Stevie Wonder and calling him at no o'clock <laughs> and he again that gift in the music of being able to talk about serious things yet do it in a way that you didn't feel down when you heard the music. Uh, he had that, that gift of being able to communicate something important, but still make you feel good to hear the music. When he wanted to get really, really to you, such as uh, Three Miles Down about the coal miners and, and how they you know, felt working in a coal mine three miles down or um, Cain, when he talks about the murder of a mother of two black sons, a white mother of two black sons. He's talking about Gene Toomer's book, but he's educating, the whole time he's writing, he's educating the listener. And it is unfortunate that some people listen to the beat without perceiving the words. And it's very important that people get that this is timeless music and the concepts, the facts, the history that is within his body of work needs to be taught to our young people. Whether they like the music or not, they need to know the information. And that's what he tried to do. 
my very, very first experience of going to a Gil Scott Heron concert was inspired by the research I had done for a paper as a freshman at college in Philadelphia. And how it happened was unexpected. I was working at the fish market restaurant, five-star restaurant in Center City, Philadelphia. And someone dropped a Philly Weekly on the counter and Gil's picture was on the front. And it said, tonight at the Bijou. And I thought, oh my goodness, I live in West Philly. I can't go home if I want to go to this concert. I got to go right after work. So I decided to go. I was able somehow to stay after the first set and stay for, I wanted to stay for the second set. In between the performances, I had to find something to do, so I sat at the bar. It just so happened that Ed Brady sat down beside me, Gil's guitarist, and anybody that's been in the presence of a famous person unexpectedly, they're usually tongue-tied. So I was groping for something to say because the silence was deafening and I said to him, I said, you know, Gil Scott Heron is teaching people. Oh my goodness, I didn't expect Ed to get so excited over that and he said, I'm going to go get Gil and I thought, oh my God. <laughs> so he went and got Gil and Gil came out and he put his arm around me and he said, and everything went out of my head. I was just kind of like, uh. <laughs> I ended up getting an autograph, but um, I never said to him what Ed wanted me to repeat to him. In later years, uh, at the University of Pennsylvania, the Annenberg Center, Third World and uh, the Amnesia Express were performing and I got to say it to him at that concert. So in a funny way, um, everything's come full circle. I researched the work. I began to understand there was a much deeper level to his work and his music. And these years later, I'm able to express that understanding and pass it on to viewers. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn, and I hope you make your own journey with Gil Scott Heron and the Amnesia Express.